Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Kaui Lucas. And I'm Raya Salter. A few weeks ago, we brought you the morning half of a special energy meeting in Hawaii, one in which a number of German companies and officials came to talk about the German energy experience. But we only covered half of the program in that episode. Now we'd like to cover the second half, part two of our coverage of this very unusual event. The symposium took place at the Sullivan Conference Center at the Medical School in Kaka'ako and involved a number of participants from both Hawaii and Germany, which as you may know is a global leader in clean energy. The program featured a number of cutting-edge German clean energy companies seeking to partner with the Hawaii clean energy industry. They were Mercedes-Benz Energy, Sonnen, Stornetic, Adcor, Piwo Energy Solutions, and Geth. The program was entitled, What Lessons Can Hawaii Learn from the Latest German Innovations in Energy Storage, Renewables, and Efficiency? It was hosted by the University of Hawaii and the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. A few weeks ago, Think Tech on OC16 covered the first part of the program. That included remarks of René van den Hovel of the German American Chamber of Commerce and Dennis Saal, Honorary Consul for Germany with presentations on energy initiatives and technologies in Germany and Hawaii. The morning included remarks by Representative Chris Lee, Chair of the House Energy Committee, Brian Kealoha, Executive Director of Hawaii Energy, and Miles Topping, Director of Energy Management at UH Manoa. It also included remarks by Martin Despang, a German architect and professor of architecture at UH Manoa, and Fritz Rettberg, Head of Innovation Management at the Institute of Energy Systems at Dortmund University in Germany. That took us through the morning of the program and part one of our coverage. There was much more to come in the afternoon, including presentations by a number of German clean energy companies and U.S. clean energy experts. The afternoon also included presentations by Leslie Cole Brooks of the Distributed Energy Resources Council, Sandra Tritton of Sonnen, James Karavakis and Jesse Shoemaker of Mercedes-Benz Energy, Scott Sue, Vice President of System Operations at Hawaiian Electric, Reddy Tutti of Hartnett Cordes, and David Lassner, president of UH. So Daimler has five major wings of the company, as many of you probably know. There's a big car portion of the business, as well as trucks, vans, buses, and a financial services wing that has supported all of them. And now we can add to this Mercedes-Benz Energy, a real energy company under the Mercedes-Benz logo. So how did we get to having an energy company? For us, that all comes back to essentially the automotive core of the business. And we have committed as a car company, as Mercedes-Benz, to electrification of the fleet. So that started years ago with the first traditional hybrid vehicles and has moved into plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. Uh, now we also have several fully electric models on the market and a deep expansion of that. I don't know how many saw the Paris Auto Show. We revealed the new EQ line. Uh, an EQ SUV will launch in 2019 at approximately the same price point as a regular gasoline SUV, which is gonna be huge for, for the industry with, with uh, range well above 200 miles. So we're really, really committed to electrifying our full fleet over time. That's all Mercedes cars over time. And that for us dovetails perfectly with stationary. Um, as part of the automotive business, we guarantee spare parts availability for 15 years. And when your cars are electric, one of those main spare parts is batteries. If you've got batteries sitting on the shelf in a warehouse, to keep them alive, you have to run current through them. So we decided at that spare parts warehouse in Germany to provide grid services. And so we brought, uh, what, what is that one? That one is 12, oh no, the spare parts is 18 megawatt hours of capacity online in Germany right now providing frequency regulation. And so also with electrification, we started retiring some, vehicle, some batteries out of vehicles, and they still had a lot of life left. So we started doing a second life facility, and we now have 12, that's the 12 megawatt hour facility, I think in Hamburg, providing frequency regulation there too. 
And so that was just a natural progression then for us to do some off-grid stuff in the telecom sector in, in sub-Saharan Africa. We really learned a lot from all of these and decided to come to market in a big commercial way with front-of-the-meter grid-scale products, CNI behind-the-meter products, and residential behind-the-meter as well. And we are really putting money to back up our commitment. Uh, what you see here, as with any good German presentation, there's a picture of the facility. On the left-hand side is our R&D facility in Stuttgart. And the right is our production factory in Commons in East Germany. And at that production facility, we just broke ground, what, about two weeks ago on a half a billion euro expansion of that plant's manufacturing capacity. And that's all lithium ion. And they supply, that plant supplies the lithium ion batteries for our entire fleet. <coughs> What they do there is they take cells, package those cells in series into modules, and then three modules in series goes into a full EV pack. Um, yeah, nice system. And uh, here are some references uh, for applications and where um, his technologies gets deployed. Uh, this is district heating in Munich, um, where uh, they have a custom solution uh, for providing heating in the city of Munich, um, probably are like cooling for the Oktoberfest to cool the beer. Um, that's where yeah. like, his system gets used. Um, they have also um, a, uh, an application and a project in London um, where they did uh, social housing. Uh, yeah, so 3,000 units uh, in a uh, social housing, low income housing, where his systems, and we see um, a snapshot there of the, some of the system where it provides uh, um, hot water for showers as well as uh, heating mm -hmm. and cooling for each of those uh, units. Um, this is another one uh, in the heart of Frankfurt, which is uh, Germany's also largest airport. And uh, here's another um, like complex system where they provide uh, heating, cooling, and hot water. Like, oh, oh. Yeah, oh. And also uh, electricity um, generation. Uh, for those uh, units. Um, this is another uh, application also which has um, some um, application and ties to Hawaii. Uh, we heard in some meetings that uh, there's also a, uh, supposedly a project where yeah, you would use uh, seawater uh, to cool um, some of the, um, the, the apartment buildings. And uh, yeah, Geneva doesn't have as nice beaches as Hawaii does, but they have a nice lake, and actually that lake water gets used for, uh, to provide heat and, uh, and cold for 3,000 uh, housing units. And uh, I think you have two more of those projects already in Switzerland, so uh, this is also um, one uh, application. Um, and it also works with uh, geothermal uh, as well as um, solar, so the system can be uh, combined with uh, those kinds of technologies. Uh, and this is another uh, from Frankfurt uh, project. And uh, we want to show one more, which is uh, now on the larger side, is a, a large uh, TV station uh, from Germany in Munich. And uh, here they have a cogeneration plant. Uh, PO has a cogeneration plant. And um, so they, with that system, they provide um, cooling for a large server park, but also using um, the uh, process heat out of that cogeneration plant, um, they use that um, to um, heat and cool uh, the building. And here um, you see a snapshot of that um, uh, live view system, the controlling and monitoring system, where you see uh, what gets produced uh, at any point of time, and then also what goes into heating and cooling. And the system actually looks at what uh, is needed and then um, generates that electricity and heat uh, accordingly so to save uh, energy. And here's uh, yeah, a more technical view of uh, how that system in, in Munich looks like. Uh, you see the turbines over here uh, producing um, electricity, but also um, heat, like uh, process heat, waste heat that can be used uh, to heat up water. And that water uh, then 
um, can be, uh, with an absorption process, be used uh, to cool also, to cool the server park, but also provide um, heating um, and hot water use for, for example, for, for showers in that uh, here um, TV station. Um, so while we're here, we're in Hawaii, and what could be applications here uh, in uh, Hawaii? Um, so that's um, how uh, the energy supply looks like. Um, about probably 60 to 65 percent is oil and gas, um, and that pro like um, that production um, is, has only for electricity. Uh, 35 percent efficiency, and the rest actually goes to waste. It goes into the atmosphere, and that's where um, his technology comes in. Um, so he can actually um, uh, reduce the loss of the electricity uh, and the uh, the loss of uh, energy, and provide heating and cooling um, for uh, the residents in, uh, of Hawaii. And um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, these are our references. As you can see, we are working for a lot of big companies. Uh, Germany is uh, not only a beer uh, uh, country, uh, we are also doing some really pretty cars. Um, uh, so we are really very uh, manufacturing agnostics and we have uh, um, also a lot of suppliers uh, for car manufacturers and we are working for them. We are pretty much specialized on uh, hospitals, uh, which is a uh, very high potential when we're talking about energy efficiency because they are mostly 24-7. Uh, but it's not easy doing projects there because they are 24-7. So you have to plan it really very uh, detailed. And as you know, the Germans are famous for planning in very detailed. Um, there is one example uh, we did for uh, BMW in Landshut. Um, I picked us uh, this uh, best case because of uh, the high savings uh, we did for them and it was an interesting thing because we uh, recovered uh, heat in a 2.8 megawatt thermal uh, energy potential and we switched it into a um, 298 uh, refrigeration uh, tons and 305 refrigeration tons with an absorption chiller. I don't want to go into details. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions after uh, my presentation and do, do want, you want to go into details, uh, you can ask me whatever you want. Um, and we installed a CHP on a high um, or, or a high level uh, and high quality uh, base. Uh, it was a very complex um, system and we did a financing for that. So BMW doesn't have to pay anything uh, and we get paid out of the heat we recover, get out paid out of the cooling we are delivering and get out paid of the electricity we are delivering them. So it's a really interesting uh, project. Uh, there's another one I want to show you. It's a hospital, a uh, really big hospital, uh, the same uh, where we did the financing. Uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's a, a possibility to do the financing for us, but it's not a need. Uh, so we're also happy if the client has the money to finance it. Um, and here we rebuild the ventilation system. And my impression is, uh, was it's in the last um, two days when I was uh, talking to some uh, people here that the ventilation and ex for especially the, the cooling system um, might have a, a huge potential here uh, from the control side, from the efficiency side, from thinking about uh, different uh, control systems uh, and control parameters at the end. Uh, then we install the heat recovery system uh, in the HVAC. Um, so just using the, here you have to use the, the, the cool air uh, bringing back uh, to the room and using that fresh air that you need um, not to sleep. Uh, but there are some rules, I think, also here it's about uh, from the ASHRAE 30% uh, minimum fresh air you need. Um, then we install the adiabatic humidification, uh, humidi humidi humidification system. It's always the same when I want to pronounce this word. Um, then we installed a new cooling unit uh, and optimized also the illumination. So we are also doing lighting as a small part in our uh, business, but it's still a potential um, to also to get a focus on the lighting. 
First, just as a, a matter of context, our peak load for the, for the HECO companies, so that includes HECO on Oahu, MECO, which is Maui, Lanai, Ia, Molokai, and HELCO, which is the big island, is about 1,500 megawatts per peak. And as you see, the generating capacity is approximately twice that because we are an island, and if our stressed out engineers make a mistake, they can't just go buy power for somebody else. They have to sort it out. Um, also, uh, we're making good progress. We're at about 24% of our renewable portfolio standard, and uh, that does include distributed generation. If you look at just what the utility is generating, plus PPAs, plus third parties, it's at uh, around, around 14, 15%. Um, we had 300 megawatts of distributed rooftop, approximately. I know that must seem really tiny to you, as I saw from the, the, the previous presentation. But if you just keep in mind that um, we do have the highest per capita installation of rooftop solar in the nation. And also, another interesting fact is that we have the highest per capita installation of solar thermal in the world, save Cyprus. So we are the most isolated island on the planet. We have the highest electric rates in the nation. People have an environmental ethic here, and thank goodness we have the leadership um, to, uh, to um, move us forward. So, okay. Oh, that's better. I was kind of crouching <laughs> like a vulture up here. So, um, all right. So I couldn't begin to put all the challenges on one slide, right? Completely impossible, but I kind of have. I just did it right here. The first challenge that we have here is obviously technical. Um, we have an aging grid. Um, um, we just do. And even though it's paradise and perfect, there's, there are some issues that are sort of insidious. Now, as a, a great anecdote, um, when I get ready to go to the mainland or occasionally to Europe, I pull out the winter coat, right? And the zippers are always fused shut. I have to get out WD-40 and I have to squirt it into the zipper to make it work because the salt and humidity makes everything corrode. So it's hot, it's humid, and it's salty. And I think it can really play havoc with power electronics. Um, we have our 100% mandate for renewables. A lot of it's going to be intermittent renewables, obviously, um, sun and wind. Um, and the grid is not designed for that. And we're finding solutions for this intermittent resource that we're having to bring on board. Um, safety and reliability, you know, it's kind of interesting how um, in some of our discussions with our power supply improvement plan of looking at what does the utility do if our biggest generator on Oahu, for instance, goes down. AES is a coal-fired plant, 180 megawatts. It's a lot for us. Well, you know, you've got to shed load. You have to manage the load and generation. Well, what if a lot of your solar resources are on those circuits? You don't want to shed that. You make it worse. And uh, so having to update and refigure how it is that we're going to move ahead. So technical, not to mention voltage issues, frequency issues, um, the whole gamut that you know, I know that you all know about yourselves. Okay, the finances. So. Um, where do we get the money? Uh, does the ratepayer pay for it? Does, um, does the individual customer who installs a distributed resource pay for it, the cost causative principle, or the next hundred, do they get a $10,000 bill because they want to put in a rooftop system with a 10 kW battery? Oh, that, that doesn't sound right. Do the shareholders pay for it? That makes people's eyes kind of bulge out of their eyes. So um, how do we do that as a combination? So coming up with the way that we're going to invest, who's going to pay and what's fair, is, is, is a difficult um, puzzle. And then the policy. We, we're blessed with having innovative and forward-thinking policymakers. Well, um, clean energy is part of our sustainability agenda for the University of Hawaii and obviously also for the entire state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great opportunity for Hawaii to share what we're doing. This is an amazing place for clean energy with solar, wind, ocean, wave. Um, you can do pretty much anything here. Um, and the opportunity for us to understand what's going on in other places, in this case Germany, which 
um, has pulled some things off that we haven't yet uh, to understand both from a technology and a policy perspective how we can do even better and um, maybe even provide the opportunities for some of our Hawaii op entrepreneurs to connect with German entrepreneurs or identify opportunities in Germany for um, what we're doing here, including our great university research programs. Germany, as we know, has developed many cutting-edge energy technologies and has exported them to the world. Hawaii, as we also know, is a laboratory and leader in clean energy. So it's a good time for the two to get together to compare notes. This symposium was perfect for that. This program was a great statement of our progress in clean energy and the promise of an important new relationship we can have with Germany. This kind of program is clearly in Hawaii's interest, and we hope programs like this with Germany and other countries can happen on a regular basis. It's part of our natural leadership role in clean energy. Not only can this kind of symposium teach us what is happening in energy in Europe, identify the latest and greatest technologies and products, not only can it help us establish win-win business, academic, and government relationships with contributors around the world, it can also help us find our own path, refine our vision, meet our goals, and save our state. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar, and we don't hear much about them. But ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the islands and the world. Remember also that ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows and uploads. ThinkTech has a high-tech First Amendment green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to be a part of our live audience or participate in our programs and help us raise public awareness, contact us at think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in Hawaii. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. And in fact, you can call in and join our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in at 415-871-2474 and pose a question or make a comment to participate in the discussion. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters.
Okay, Raya, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Raya does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being a part of our Think Tech family and supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Kaui Lucas. And I'm Raya Salter. Aloha, everyone. Raya, thanks so much for being host in this program. Now, you're an energy lawyer. The German Hawaiian Energy Symposium, what does that mean? What kind of impression do you have about it? Uh, it's, a, it's actually a great and fascinating opportunity. Germany is truly on the far cutting edge of renewable energy, um, high levels of renewable energy penetration, very progressive policy, and that uh, Germany would be seeking to partner with Hawaii as the state with the highest level of solar penetration in the United States, I think is um, an excellent sign on Hawaii's clean energy leadership. So there's two issues, you know, that are worth mentioning. One is that Matt Lynch of the University of Hawaii put this program together, and that's to his credit. A shout out to Matt Lynch. <laughs> uh, the, other, the other thing is, um, you know, that we have to follow up. We have to have more such yeah. programs with Germany and maybe other countries in Europe. I like Europe, but it could be Asia. And, and finally, the most important thing is we have to follow up on the conversations with Germany. They're selling their products. They're selling expertise. They want to learn from us. We can't let it stop here. So how do we go forward and make sure that there's a lasting effect? I think that's a really important question. Um, it's, it, it's essential that these conversations um, move forward. I think the state has shown a commitment to international dialogue and engagement and should continue to do that. I think it's also important that we here in Hawaii set the stage for industry so that they um, feel confident that they can uh, continue to reach out and uh, really try and get the most innovative and cutting edge um, projects, including those from Germany, and bring them here. Thank you, Raya. You're very welcome. Uh -huh.